Kia ora koto. I'm Patricia Pillay and I'm a zoo archaeologist and a postgraduate researcher at the University of Auckland. As a zoo archaeologist, I'm interested in human-animal interactions and analysing faunal material or animal bone from the archaeological record. For my master's with Professor Melinda Allen and Professor Judith Littleton, I considered human-dog relationships in island Polynesia and Aotearoa, New Zealand, focusing on kuri, or the Māori dog, uh, that originally arrived from East Polynesia and is now extinct. In ancient Polynesian societies, dogs were companions, they were cooperative hunters and sometimes competitors. They were one of a handful of animals that Polynesian ancestors carried with them on their waka all the way across the eastern Pacific from the Cook Islands to the Marquesas and as far south as Aotearoa in New Zealand. You might have come across this uh, very well-known specimen uh, known to best represent uh, the extinct Māori dog or kuri, but there are also other 18th century depictions from sketches that uh, indicate what Kuri and the Polynesian dog might have looked like. And although they were clearly highly valued, do the dog bones and teeth of Polynesian dogs are often uncommon in the Pacific Island archaeological sites, and that suggests that the Polynesian dog was likely kept in small numbers. On some regions, small and I smaller islands, uh, dogs were introduced but disappear quite quickly over time. In these cases, they are only known through local or tr traditions um, or archaeological discoveries as on some of the smaller Cook Islands. This pattern of arrival followed by local extinction suggests that Polynesian dogs occasionally competed with their owners for food or in other ways and perhaps were intentionally removed. In Aotearoa, New Zealand, on the other hand, this is a different story. Māori traditions say that Kupe, the famous Polynesian navigator, carried his dog to Aotearoa, New Zealand some 650 years ago. Known locally as Kuri to Māori, they were highly a valued companion and, are oft and were depicted in uh, early Māori rock art, uh, in carvings, and they had their own whakapapa. Māori carried them across the length of the country and even onto large offshore islands such as Great Mercury, Derville and Stewart Island, which is a long way for a dog to travel. Kuri were probably important in hunting, especially for moa, and their bone and teeth are often found in early archaeological coastal settlements. But what happened to Kuri in the centuries leading up to Western contact? The loss of moa, followed by the Little Ice Age from the 16th century onward, made life challenging for many Māori communities in this changing environment. To answer this question, for my masters, I consulted with local iwi as well as the Auckland Museum and archaeologists working in cultural heritage management to study kuri teeth from archaeological sites found between the North Island um, from Northland to the Bay of Plenty, spanning the 13th century to uh, the 18th century. My sample contained more than 70 dogs analyzed. And you might wonder, why would we study teeth? It turns out we can learn a great deal about an individual's diet and health through their teeth. Like your modern dentist, I looked for evidence of cavities known as caries and plaque or dental calculus. I also looked for tooth wear and fractures as wear can come from scavenging in gritty or sandy soils and broken teeth can often come from gnawing and cracking open bones for marrow. The specimen on the left from Oruarangi shows very light enamel wear, suggesting uh, that this uh, this specimen is in quite good condition and was eating possibly relatively soft foods as uh, they're not very worn from very hard hard materials. I also looked for uh, looked uh, to consider kuri health for a condition known as linear enamel hyperplasia and pit type defects or tooth decay. This results when the formation of tooth enamel is interrupted, as for example, when an individual has a poor diet, disease, or bad infection. My, my findings were quite interesting. Most of the North Island kuri had few cavities and little plaque, suggesting low sugar diets. Few teeth were fractured or severely worn, suggesting that they were consuming relatively soft foods. There was also very little evidence of malnutrition or disease, the, and the most stressful period being the lives of young dogs that coincided with weaning from their mother, from their mother's milk. 
Despite the challenging times faced by some Māori communities in the centuries leading up to European arrival in this changing environment, Kuri Teeth suggests that they were well fed and healthy. These findings fit well with Māori histories. Kuri were highly valued for their hides and fur, which were made into cloaks for chiefs, and these were known as kahukuri. In the 18th century, many kuri had their own names and whakapapa. Unfortunately, the Māori dog eventually went extinct when larger European breeds were introduced. But for many centuries prior in this changing environment, a dog's life in Aotearoa was quite good, 